Good evening and welcome to The Report with me, John Rees. Tonight on the programme, we'll be discussing a new campaign led by The Sun newspaper. The paper is encouraging British Muslims to take a stand against the Islamic State and what it calls extremist views. We'll also be looking at the first steps of Palestine's new unity government and other stories making the headlines today. But first, the continuing violence in Kashmir. Sarah Say has been following the story. Kashmiri villagers woke up this morning to survey the damage caused by mortar shelling the night before. India and Pakistan have been firing at each other since Friday. Both countries have fought three wars over Kashmir since they won independence from Britain in 1947. But this current exchange of mortar appears to be the heaviest seen for decades. Each side has accused the other of targeting civilians, as well as of breaking a border truce that has largely held since 2003. And while exchanges of sporadic fire are common along the de facto border dividing the region, the number of civilian deaths is unusually high. Reasons best known to them, but they are becoming more aggressive with each day's passing, the number of uh, violations and the number of rounds which they have fired and the number of posts and the villages they have uh, engaged, I mean, that is increasing with each day passing. भारत और पाकिस्तान के बॉर्डर पर जो कुछ भी हो रहा है उस पर हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी पल पल की नजर बनाए हुए हैं और मैं समझता हूं कि प्रधानमंत्री जी को इसका जवाब देने की कोई जरूरत नहीं है क्योंकि हमारे सेना और बीएसएफ के जवान इसका माकूल जवाब दे रहे हैं और जो भी हमारे बीएसएफ और सेना के जवान इस समय परफॉर्म कर रहे हैं या जिस तरीके से जवाब दे रहे हैं उससे हम लोग पूरी तरह से संतुष्ट हैं both sides blame each other for starting this latest escalation. But it's the civilians caught in the crossfire that are paying the price. Many homes have been hit and a total of nine Pakistani and eight Indian civilians have been killed since fighting erupted more than a week ago. <laughs> हमारी बात ये है कि हमारे यहाँ पर रोज चौबीस घंटे की चौबीस घंटे गोली बारे चल चल रही है हम ये कहते हैं कि एक दिन आर पार की जंग होनी चाहिए रो रोज का ये ड्रामा खत्म हो जाए हमारे मवेशी भूखे भर रहे हैं फसल तबाह हो गई है पूरी इतनी भी है कुछ फ्लड से है कुछ गोलाबारी से ऑन बोथ साइड्स ऑफ द बॉर्डर पीपल हैव फ्लेड फ्रॉम देयर विलेजेस स्टेइंग विद रिलेटिव्स अंटिल दे बिलीव इट्स सेफ टू रिटर्न बट एज नीदर साइड हैव शोन एनी साइन सो फार ऑफ बैकिंग डाउन इट माइट बी अ वाइल बिफोर दे कैन Well, joining me on the line is Kushud Drabu, CBE, a barrister who specialises in human rights issues. And on Skype, I'm joined by Dr. Dibesh Anand, who's Head of Politics and International Relations at the University of Westminster. Welcome to the programme, both of you. Um, Dibesh, um, who started it? In fact, uh, we can never answer this for sure because, as you know, both sides blame each other. The fundamental problem here is not who started it this time, but the fundamental problem is that both states, India and Pakistan, they lay claim over territories and people, most of whom don't feel that they belong to India and Pakistan. Right now, what I mean, in this phase, I've tried to look into the news reports. Both of them seem to be blaming each other. It could be a conscious policy on side of both military to ratchet up the issue, or it could be something else. We would not know for sure. Okay, Kusha, did you do you agree with that? That actually, I, I, that, that... I do, I do, I certainly agree with that because I mean, Kashmir has been uh, a football between the two countries for about 60, 65 years, and the casualties that you mentioned came into insignificance. And look at the last 25 years, when 120,000 people from the valley have become, uh, you know, the subject of oppression, and 120,000 people have actually been killed by. Indian forces and many so-called militants or those people who are seeking uh, freedom from Indian rule. So it's a very tragic situation, John. I mean, this has been happening for far too long. And uh, the people who pay the price 
are the innocent people in Kashmir. It's not the politicians. Politicians have a wonderful... Okay. Sorry, Kushta, we, we lost you just there for a moment. We'll come back to you. Um, Dibesh, do, do, do you think there's any signs of this, uh, of the violence slowing down now? I mean, after all, it, it's, it's certainly not the first time this has happened, is it? No, it's not the first time and it won't be the last time. You see, what happens is, of course, there have been three major wars, as your reporter pointed out. And at this point in time, it is unlikely that India and Pakistan will go for a major war. It doesn't suit anyone's interest to go for a major war. But this kind of minor war, or rather minor tension, which doesn't really kill Indian or Pakistani soldiers most of the time. There might be a few casualties here and there. That's it. And as you know, the military and political leaders on both sides don't really care about life of soldiers. Forget about life of civilians. What's likely to happen is, and what's new in India, of course, is that it seems that and often I have spoken to, let's say, civilians on the Indian occupied side, and they would say that usually the firing, usually, not all the time, usually the firing would start from Pakistan side, but in the end, most casualty also takes on Pakistan side, because there are more civilians on the Pakistani side of occupied Kashmir than on the Indian side, living close to the border. So what's likely to happen is maybe US or someone else will make it involved and they'll ask both India and Pakistan to calm down, and then they may calm down, but there is not going to be a let's say, durable ceasefire, because the fundamental problem here is that we are dealing with two states that are quite cruel and don't really care about the people and, the, and don't care about the life of the people on the ground, as your report pointed out, where they said, look, our cattle are being killed, our people are being killed. It's better for them to fight it out rather than kill us and pretend that they're not fighting each other. Mm. Do you, what, what do you make of the sort of political balance on, on either side of this now? We have the Modi government, nationalist government uh, in, uh, in India. We have a a weak government, some would say, in Pakistan. Is that adding to the instability? Not really, because uh, remember, the, for the, both defence and foreign policy, even in Pakistan, has remained largely in the hands of uh, the military. So the recent protests in Pakistan also, we know that there was uh, there were rumours of reports, uh, rumours of deal being done between Nawaz Sharif and the military, where military said, on Kashmir and India, it is us who decide. Now, Pakistani military remains very strong, and Indian military also is strong, as you know, but the Indian nationalist government for first few days was being mocked by the opposition by, and by others saying that, oh, you used to claim that you have these strong nationalist credentials. How can you not retaliate against Pakistan? So for, for newsmakers and politicians and military sitting in Delhi or Islamabad, it is a game that they play because most of them would have never been to the border area and would not ever realize the tragedy these kinds of wars impose on the people living on the ground. Uh, Kusha, do, do you agree with that, that this is, a, in, in a way, a cruel game being played, but the, the people doing the, the majority of the playing are, are, the, are the armed forces rather than the politicians? I think, I think, I think that must be right, but uh, let me repeat again. I mean, this, these are minor skirmishes. What is really at stake is the right of the people of Kashmir to express their will freely and without fear. That is what the United Nations has decided. That is what international community had, had backed up for a long time. But now, because of the imbalance in economic power, sadly, India is not in a position, or the world is not in a position to force India into submitting to the rights of Kashmiris. Kashmir can become a bridge between two countries, which have been at war for a long time. And India would be very surprised if they decided to take their uh, you know, silly uh, glasses off and allow the people of Kashmir to make a free choice, they might win. They, you never know. Because Kashmir, the Indian side of Kashmir, is a very well-developed uh, economy, uh, despite the fact that we have been ruled by, uh, uh, you know, uh, these uh, Indian-imposed rulers in Kashmir. There is no democracy in Kashmir. It stops at the tunnel. It stops when the state of Jammu and Kashmir begins. If only India had the courage to provide what it is giving to other parts of India, democracy and free choice, they would be very surprised with the choices that people of Kashmir make. People of Kashmir are predominantly Muslim, but they have lived in amity and in peace and harmony with people of other faiths. This is the only place in India where no communal writing has ever taken place. Whereas the rest of the India burns from time to time with these demonstrations against Muslims and demonstrations against Hindus and Sikhs and other places. So, I mean, India needs to, you know, take its uh, 
you know, prejudice, get rid of their prejudice that simply because we are Muslim, we will necessarily support Pakistan. That is not true. That is certainly not true. Okay. Not anymore. Dibesh, I mean, it's true, isn't it, that the the, the, the referendum on Kashmir, the supposed to be UN-backed referendum, uh, would be the best solution, but it's the, the least likely solution. See, in fact, uh, India and Pakistan both had promised, and India specifically had promised plebiscite. So the idea was that uh, Kashmiri people would be asked once and for all, what do they want, India and Pakistan? But see, we have moved beyond that. We have moved beyond that because that plebiscite that was promised and under UN, you know, by both India and Pakistan was a choice between India and Pakistan. And sadly, I mean, it's sad because, of course, that doesn't give genuine choice to Kashmiri people, even that solution. So therefore, a genuine choice would be where India and Pakistan agree on a referendum in Jammu and Kashmir and give them the choice of India, Pakistan, or full independence, that is Azadi. Because the problem right now is if you go for India or Pakistan option, you will have minorities on both sides unhappy in, in any case. So you cannot expect, for instance, I mean, let's say Buddhists or um, Shia Muslims or for that matter, even Kashmiri Muslims to necessarily go like Pakistan or necessarily like India. I think the best solution would be Azadi to Kashmiris. And Azadi would imply at this stage, for instance, to begin with, first, demilitarization on both sides. Secondly, giving them the choice of India, Pakistan or independence. That, for me, is the most durable solution. Kusha, that's a, va that's a valid point, isn't it, that any referendum now, if there were ever to be one, um, should contain a, a third option for independence? Absolutely right. Absolutely right. I couldn't agree more. The third option is very important, but, but for it to work, you need the cooperation of India and Pakistan. And as I said, they need to sit together and decide how to take this matter forward, but in consultation with the people of Kashmir. The people of Kashmir, unfortunately, are not represented by the government of the uh, uh, government in the valley. That is a government imp imposed by India and has been imposed by India and chosen by India for the last 65 years. So we have got to find a means of, you know, getting genuine representation for the people of Kashmir, who will then be a third party between India and Pakistan. At the moment, I have to say, I've just returned from Kashmir after devastating floods there, when millions of people have been rendered homeless and hundreds of lives have been lost. I have witnessed the same army, Indian army, who have been the killers in the past, helping people of Kashmir in their plight against floods. It is very, very important for India to use this opportunity to win the hearts of Kashmiris, and they might well succeed if they continue on this path. Okay, so I'm going to have to stop. Nature. Going to have to stop you there because I'm afraid that's all that we've got time for on this discussion. Now let's take a look at some more. Of the <laughs>